come about? Uh, so how did, how did the switch to black and white come about? Yeah, yeah, because you were you were saying that. Uh, well, first of all, the lab shutting down at uh, Costco is going to be a huge <laughs> thing, right? Oh my God! Yeah, no, it's. I mean, it was. It was. I think it's uh, several things. So first of all, um, uh, yeah, the the lab at Costco where I usually get my color film developed uh, shut down because I think the machine broke, and they're just like, we're not going to fix the machine anymore. I'm like, that kind of sucks, and I'm like. Hmm, you know, there's there's other places I could go to get stuff processed and shuttle it back and forth. Maybe I'll scan. And I'm just like, oh my god, that's just too much of a hassle. And <laughs> and also like, you know, just randomly, I just have a bunch of Triax just sitting at home that I haven't touched in the last like two or three years. Yeah. And I don't know. I just like for some reason, it was just like, hmm, you know, it's just kind of like I just had an urge to to start shooting it. Um, it's almost like if you haven't had like a certain dessert or a chocolate for a while, like you're just like, for no reason, you're like, man, I really want, like, I really miss cheesecake or I really miss like, <laughs> or you, you know what I mean, right? And so Tri- I was just like, Trix is your cheesecake. Yeah. So I was just like, you know, I don't know why, but I'm like, I'm just going to follow my gut, my intuition. So I just popped in a roll of um, Triax and I'm like, hmm, to shoot at 400 or push it to 1600, <laughs> baby. And so, you know. So, so I've, you know, I've actually been shooting a lot. Like, um, I've been actually shooting a uh, black and white film last week, and I've, I've, I've been almost shooting a roll a day. It's actually been really cool. So, it's you like, know, I'm shooting Tri-X and pushing to 1600, and I'm writing down the, the number, and also yeah. that I'm pushing to 1600. And pretty much I'm, um, what I think I'm going to do is process it and scan it myself. Good for you, yeah. And I think that's, that's the way, because, you know, like, like you, you know, I'm pretty busy. I don't have that much time, but... I think um, I'm not in a rush to, because like, in theory, I could shoot it for like a year again, right? And then, you know, one weekend, just have like 10 shots of espresso and just have like a massive processing party. Oh, it's not, it's not quite that easy though. Um, when you actually sit down to develop your own, like getting the, the, the developer temperature takes a little bit of time because we develop at 20 and our rooms are never 20 degrees. <laughs> Yeah, but what, what I'm actually thinking about just on a practical basis, I think I might just develop it every like 10 rolls I shoot at home because like otherwise I think it'll just become a little bit too um, overbearing. And and then uh, the, 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 the first day I actually started shooting black and white, it was like liberating. It was almost like the first day I started shooting photography for the first time. I, like I had this, uh, this joy again as like uh, being a kid picking up photography for the first time. And, I just started to see world, uh, see the world differently because I think the the problem with shooting color, and I'm sure you experience this too, is that like you intentionally look for really nice, colorful things, and a lot of it is dependent on how good the light is, right? Because yeah. if the light looks like shit, the color doesn't look very good at all, right? Yeah. But I think the nice thing about shooting black and white, it's so much more forgiving because like you could shoot it in like really bad light and bad conditions, and also push it into 1600. I'm like, holy crap! I haven't shot indoors in film in like forever. <laughs> and even random stuff like it was kind of a dark cloudy day I'm shooting at like f8 at a thousand of a second you know on a cloudy dark day yeah and I'm like that's freaking but awesome it also opens up so many other possibilities I mean black and white film uh, loves really soft lighting mm. so you want to shoot at noon go to the shade side of the street you got 1600 black and white film <laughs> perfect lighting condition right you got a whole other world open to you yeah. All of a sudden, right? Yeah, and it was, it was so fun too because, like, because um, you know, I'm sure you, you experience this too when you're shooting. Do you, do you get this? Like when you're shooting black and white. Oh, <laughs> I was she's like, dri- she's driving me crazy. I had to okay. be <laughs> I, was, I was like, when you when you're shooting color, you know, your intention is looking for color, but black and white is so much more of an abstraction. So, even when I'm shooting a photo, like, and this is the reason why you know I was I've kind of starting to shy away more from digital that I think of that is that like. When I shoot something in uh, raw and digital, and let's say I'm shooting with black and white in mind, I'm like, okay, I could shoot that, and then at the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, which which preset or which filter am I going to use to uh, create the desired look that I want, right? But what I actually really like about shooting film, especially you know pushing tri 600 a, I already know I'm going to like the look, and b, um, I don't have control over how it's going to look. <laughs> right. And so I almost like having that loss of control and it, to me it's almost a little bit liberating because I don't have to stress out about it. Like, I mean, there are certain times when I'm post-processing my black and whites and 
you know, I just spend way too much time doing it. I'm sure if I just shoot the black and white film, just scan it, I mean, granted, you're going to add a little contrast, blah, 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 but it's pretty much like what, what you get is going to more or less be the, the final product. That's and it, so, yeah. I don't know, it just, and I've just been having so much fun with it, and, you know. And have, have you gotten any results back from it yet, or? I'm actually thinking about um, perhaps sometime over this weekend, uh, sitting down and processing my film and uh, scanning it on my Epson V750, because uh, this is another thing is that I'm going to, so next week I'm leaving down to LA, I'm going to be there for about two weeks, flying to Seattle, Vancouver for about two weeks, and then I'm going to be in Europe pretty much the whole summer, and pretty, I mean, I have, I have a, like maybe 10 rolls of portrait left, but I'm like, yeah, like, I'm just trying to think, I'm like, should I shoot digital for the summer, should I shoot black and white, and I don't know, just like my 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 soul is telling me I must shoot black and white, and I haven't actually been on a big trip like that. The only times I've actually shot black and white film was in Asia because I could actually get it processed and developed yeah. for very cheap and scanned. Um, like I was in Korea, you know, I could get a roll of black and white film scanned for and processed for like five bucks, and pushing the film only cost an extra like dollar or dollar fifty. So it was yeah. just like super affordable, and that's actually one of the main reasons I actually started shooting color film when I came back to America was because. I didn't have the time to process my own black and whites and be, you know, Costco just was so cheap and affordable and just, it just seemed like a more uh, logical sense. Totally cheap. And they're using the same uh, processor that any big glass, the Noritsu mm. processor is what everyone uses. So it's not like it's going to be a shooter. Yeah, exactly. As long as they're maintaining it, right? And, um, yeah. Now, the, the thing is, now yes. you decided to go with Tri-X. Why did you decide to go with Tri-X instead of HP4? You know, HP4? I, you know uh, I just, I've never shot HP5. Um, I mean, when I when I started shooting a film for the first time, I was a, I was in Tokyo. I'm like, what film should I shoot? They're just like, dude, just try X. Don't even think about it. I'm like, okay. And I'm like, and there's, there's so many different type of black and white films out there. But I'm just like, okay. Photojournalist, street photographers, whoever has been shooting Tri-X for like ever, and I'm sure HP5 is amazing, but. It's almost like... Um, it was good enough for Brisson, right? Yeah, it was, it was good. I mean, like... <laughs> I mean, I, and I've seen photos on HP5. They look awesome. I mean, honestly, all black and white films to me look awesome. But I think Tri-X is... You know, it's almost like having a brand name you could trust, if that makes any sense. No, I hear you. You know, when I was doing my film experiment, we'll talk about that later. Okay. Uh, notice I put it in the past tense. Uh, <laughs> the, I ended up going with HP5 uh, only because of this. Uh, I worried about the cost of film. Uh, Tri-X is 489 US a roll, hmm. uh, and HP5 is 475 US a roll. That's not that so much. It's That's about the same. same. But the same. if you look at the bulk prices, um, you buy a roll of bulk Tri-X, 100 feet to make like I think 20 rolls of film, uh, it's 80 bucks. But 100 feet of bulk HP5 is 50 bucks. So it's like wow. Ilford has targeted the student market and made a really, it's like under $3 a roll wow. uh, by the time you put it up. So I was like, oh, that's so cheap. And you know, the grain is, the, one thing I, that it bothers me about the new Tri-X, and I'm going to say new Tri-X because everyone's... Oh, is it? Wait, so I don't, I don't know about this new Tri-X deal. They reformulated Tri-X uh, uh, the, with the collapse of a Kodak so that it could run on the new style machines. Oh, interesting. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. uh, so I find, compared to the Tri-X I shot 30 years ago when I was in school, mm -hmm. the new Tri-X uh, curves, like the film curves this way, uh, so it took two days of pressing under magnum contact sheets to get them flat to be able to scan. Oh, really? Oh, man. Pull out your magnum contact sheet. It's going to come in handy. Uh, and it kept a, a magenta base, uh, which didn't bother me for what I was doing. What, what does magenta base mean? Like, with the, the actual film base, I couldn't get the magenta layer out of it. Um, so when you get the film out, it's going to look a little pink, I, I found. No amount of washing would get it away, right? Is that, what, is that a problem? It's not a problem. Uh, and if you ever print it with multi-contrast -contra paper, uh, to change the contrast on multi-contrast paper, you put more and more magenta in. So I think it's something uh, maybe that uh, that uh, Codex built in for that purpose. I don't know why, but for some reason, it never used to behave that way. Yeah. The HP5 is like a dream. It comes out perfectly flat, uh, you know, no need for flattening. And the grain reminds me of the grain that Triax used to be. The new Triax... Uh, they say it's the same, but I look at it and it kind of looks like a, a cross between Tri-X and T-Max to me. Mm. Uh, but it was still beautiful. I, I like the results I got from Tri-X better than any results I got how, from... How would you, you say T-Max compares to Tri-X? Or what, like, what's uh, the difference? Much -max. I never liked T-Max. Mm. Who, who, uh, who shoots T-Max then? Huh? Who shoots T-Max? I don't think anyone. John Sexton. 
shoots steam bags. He does his uh, his industrial wasteland and uh, and uh, landscape pictures in T Max. But he's shooting eight by ten and eleven by fourteen. So what is what does uh, HP five look like to you different compared to Triax the, the new Triax? Uh, it the grain has uh, the the term is acutance. The grain has a sharper edge to it. Mm. Uh, and you saw, like, the shots I showed you were wickedly overprocessed. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I, oh, by the way, because uh, uh, I got my times from the massive dev chart. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They were like 16 and a half minutes at this temperature. It was like four minutes off from what Ilford recommended, right? Oh, so you, you followed the Ilford recommendation for eight I ended up going back to the Ilford and found mm -hmm. a balance where I got some really nice uh, quality results from it, right? And got the green back under control. But it's a sharper edge green. Um, whereas the T-Max or the, uh, the Tri-X to me kind of looked a little softer, like the grains almost look like tabular rather than uh, salt grains, right? Mm -hmm. um, but the, the quality, the gradation of tones, ah, people use both. Uh, they're almost interchangeable, so it's a matter of, uh, I always felt better shooting with Tri-X than I did with HV5, right? Wait, so, so let me ask you a question. So, so uh, to, to, to turn the tables to you, Carl, so, yeah. you know, you've been shooting with a, a Leica M color for the last uh, year or two, two years? Since, uh, well, it's about a year, yeah. About a year, okay. And so, um, after we met together in Toronto, and I'm like totally gassing you into buying, <laughs> you know, to shooting film again. So, how, how's, the, how's it been for you? What, shooting film? Mm hmm Shooting black uh, and white. I stopped. Uh. I, I took the camera back. I sold the camera back. <gasps> yeah. Did you, did you lose any money? Uh, it's on consignment. So, I'm going to lose about a grand on the deal. Uh, it, was a, it was an experiment. I'm taking my lumps on it. Let me tell you. Let okay. me tell you about this, okay. Eric. So let me uh, hear, let me hear your story. One hundred percent. I love shooting film. I loved the Leica MP. I liked looking through the Leica MP. I liked touching it. I liked the way the shutter felt. I liked the way the film advance felt. Mm -hmm. I liked rewinding it. I liked the way it felt around my neck. Every step of the process. Okay. I liked developing the film. I didn't mind scanning the film. I don't have the time. Uh, with everything that's happening, you know, video production season's coming up. Uh, I've got you know the street shooter. I've tried. I've got to keep the other sites running. I've got new sites that are starting new. It. I don't have the time oh, to get to man. it. Oh man, yeah. And I just had to. I had to say, you know what? I can't do this right now. Mm. Uh, it's there. I love it. There's 40 rolls of HP5 sitting in my fridge, and there's another five or sitting here, two that have been shot. Uh, that. Oh, by the way, get one of these. Ooh. Do you, you find that? Do you actually find? Do you actually find that helps? Uh, yeah. Um, but in the end, the last couple rolls, I felt that I wanted the extra, um, I the extra ISO more than I wanted that. It just changes the way the tones come together. Hmm. Uh, adds a little more contrast to the shadow, makes skin tones a little lighter. Wait, wait. So, uh, what, wait, so tell me, tell me what the the yellow filter does in terms of the look. Uh, well, it filters yellow light hmm. uh, out, right? Mm -hmm. Is what, or no, it filters blue light. It filters the opposite of what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so what it basically does is creates a little more contrast, makes the shadows a little blacker, uh, mm -hmm. and the local contrast is spiked just a touch, but skin tones turn a little whiter on white people. Uh, so I always found that I never liked the way that skin tones looked in black and white film. They always felt mm -hmm. a little muddy to me. Uh, so when I use a yellow filter, I always found, oh, there's a look I really like. But you can also achieve the same thing by pushing the 1600, as it turns out. <laughs> oh, is that true? Yeah, yeah, it just, wait, so, just spreads the tones out a bit. Wait, so right? what happens if you shoot sixteen hundred with the yellow filter on? Oh, it'd be even worse. <laughs> it'd be even more. Wor worse as in like good? Because I kind of like a really <laughs> gritty. You think about uh, sixteen hundred. What you're doing is underexposing the film by two stops, uh -huh. and then overprocessing it by two stops. But you're not increasing the shadow density. You're only increasing the highlight density. Uh -huh. So all you're doing is pulling that up, and this is still underexposed, right? So, so you're stretching the tones out oh, by pushing it. Wait, so if you shot, so uh, going back to, if you shot 1600 with a, a yellow filter, what would it look like? Uh, it would it would be the same sort of effect. The, the skin tones would be lightened, hmm. but you might find that it's too much. I've never done it. Um, ah, interesting. To be honest, I've never, huh. I've never. And I, I honestly, I caved on it because I was shooting at uh, 800 ISO. Mm -hmm. I was actually uh, shooting at 400 with the filter on. The filter has a filter factor of, of two. So you lose a full stop. Oh, you lose a full stop. A full stop. So I would shoot at 400, but process as if I had shot 800 oh, to get that stop back. Um, oh. So it created, and you see, I saw a couple of those shots. Any of my black and white shots, it's, there, it's a little bit more of a stark contrasty look, which kind of built in an aesthetic, which I didn't mind. Oh, that's cool. Uh, yeah, but in the end, 
you know, I, I see the stuff that Neil's shooting at 1600 looks really good. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll look forward to seeing your stuff as well. <laughs> well, also, uh, Carl, are you, are you looking to sell your HP5 and that filter? Uh, if anyone wants my HP5, I'll sell it, yeah. Oh, because I'll, I'll buy it off you. Oh, really? Yeah. You going to shoot HP5? Yeah, why not? I mean, um, you know, like, if you, well, I mean, if you're not going to do anything with the film, I mean... Well, I would just I would just throw it on Craigslist here. Uh, uh, okay, then I might order some Tri-X then. <laughs> stick stick with your Tri-X. Stick with Tri-X. Okay. HP5 is great film, um, and it was it's a really a joy to work with. You know, I'm hanging on to it. If that MP doesn't sell, hmm. I may be forced to actually backtrack on this whole thing and go back to it. Hmm. I mean, uh, yeah, just just keep your options open, and see what happens. I mean, you know what else? You want to talk about midlife crisis? Yes, please. Guess who got his motorcycle license? <laughs> Midlife crisis. <laughs> you know, like um, I think I think also the one of the reasons I actually I'm actually pretty excited to uh, switch back to black and white uh, is that uh, so recently I actually just re uh, I just installed a new theme for my website uh, portfolio, which makes it more op mobile optimized, and also use that as an opportunity to kind of redo my entire portfolio. Right. And if you go to my if you go to my website portfolio, just ericimphotography.com. Oh, here. I actually made um, I made a new portfolio. Um, is this on Genesis as well? No, no, no. This is um, this is actually kind of cool. There's this, there's this. Um, Photoshop. Guess, no, it's it's called Koken.com. It's actually an open source um, uh, CM, uh, photo CMS like content management system. Oh no, I think it's not that way. Koken um, photos. So it's Koken. It's spelled K-O-K-E-N. Oh yeah, Koken. Dot me. Um, not me. Yeah, so I'll send you a link. So Koken dot me, oh, and it's open. It's open source, um, and it's free, and it's freaking awesome. Um, Does this come out of Lightroom or? No, it's just, it's just. Uh, I don't know who who who's the developer for it, but it's freaking awesome. My my friend David Kim got me onto it. Um, no wait, where's where's your blog then? Oh, so my blog is hosted on WordPress. So so essentially, ericimphotography.com is hosted on my server with the Koken platform, but then my blog is also hosted by me, but on um, WordPress. WordPress. So just That's also self-hosted, yeah, wordpress.org. Okay. But anyways, so I, I redid it, and I, I created this new, um, and I'll send you a link. I created, and then maybe you could tell me what you think about it. It's uh, a new series that is called Grit and Grain, which is uh, stolen from the, the Flickr group, because I, I really like that, that phrase. Yeah. But pretty much the concept is, it's all of my favorite kind of gritty black and white photos I've taken over the last four years. Yeah, yeah. And I look back at the photos, I'm like, this is kind of my favorite work, and why not just kind of go back to shooting black and white? And I mean, I don't think I'll ever so, stop shooting color, but it's just kind of like fun to, some, to experiment. You're going you're gonna to take it from some people and be like, oh, Mr. Color is suddenly shooting black and white. Yeah, yeah. But the, the reality is the option is there, and it's always been there through the history of photography, you know, recent history of photography. Why not uh, exercise your right to experiment with black and white? Mm. You know, sometimes it calls us. You gotta, you gotta deal with it. Mm, <laughs> right? yeah, no, but, I, but I really, really am looking forward. Like, you definitely have to get some of that stuff processed before you go away, because uh, mm. you got to see it to see if it's gonna be, if it's gonna work for you, right? That's 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 actually a, a really good point because. Yeah, like what if I look it up? I'm like this looks horrible. But okay, this is this is also the question too, because um, I've been shooting black and white film, right? And I've just been enjoying it so much. Like I've been having so much fun with myself. Yeah. Um, and I think that's also you know just like really important when you're shooting photography, because I mean this is like it sounds so like w w wishy washy, but then I think the the more I've been shooting photography, it's I care. I'm starting to care less and less about how the photos, um, how they how they look in terms of like um, the final subject matter and how it, the final content. I'm more uh -huh. interested in terms of like how much I enjoy it and if I'm having fun. Yeah. Um, I mean, listen, that's a really good point, right? Mm. Um, what, I, what I've resolved uh, is to stop worrying about how I create an image and keep worrying about creating images. <laughs> So mm -hmm. this is how I'm keeping my head straight with going to film, going off of film, back to film. Blah, blah, blah. It, ultimately, at the end of the day, I don't think it matters to me right now if I shoot it on film or digital, as long as I'm shooting good images. Mm -hmm. uh, so if it if it means you know if black and white is giving you a kick uh, in the butt to to shoot a roll a, day, a film a day again, because uh, you were like down to like a roll a week at that one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
then then I think that's all you need, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but definitely, um, you definitely want to uh, start processing that because it's going to take you probably four to six rolls to find the balance of the developing time to... That's true. Uh, and, and my advice as an old-timey photography guy, mm -hmm. D76 all the way. Wait, so why don't you like HC110? Why would you pay that much money for HC110? Is it, is it, is it just the price thing? Because I already have a bunch of it just chilling at home. That's what well, and you're fine. But, but D76 is like $3 for a gallon. Mm. Uh, and it couldn't be easier to get into liquid. And it's what the world has used since the dawn of photography time. Wait, so what's the history of uh, HC110? Uh, I, you know, I never have used HC110. Uh, it's a liquid developer. I think uh, Neil uses it because he pulls out a little bit, like a tiny little amount, and mixes it up like one to a hundred or something, <laughs> right? And I, I could never do that. I've, I've always been, uh, I've always been jug of develop.